So here's the trade plan on the left hand side with my levels that I was looking at 4304. And here's the, uh, the real time price action. What I'd just quickly like to highlight here is a couple of the indicators that I use and pay close attention to. This first one is the advanced decline line. So this indicator is basically telling you uh, how many stocks are advancing over how many stocks are declining. So when we're above the zero level, that indicates uh, the market is bullish and, and the majority of stocks are advancing. When we're below the zero level, that indicates the market is bearish and the majority of stocks are actually declining. The indicator below is the breadth indicator. This essentially is telling you uh, the volume that's trading in the market, whether it's bullish or bearish. So again, when we're above the zero line, the majority of the flow of the market is on the buy side. When we're below the zero line, the majority of the flow in the market is on the sell side. This indicator is the tick indicator. And uh, this basically tells you in any one minute iteration, how many stocks are ticking up uh, versus how many stocks are ticking down on the New York Stock Exchange. This indicator for me, I use um, for uh, identifying exhaustion. So when we trade up into this red zone, uh, that tells us that there are uh, at least a thousand stocks on the New York Stock Exchange ticking up in any one minute iteration. Now, uh, there are a lot of algorithmic and pro uh, programmatic uh, trading models that use this as a level to uh, when they see when they read this uh, 1000 print on the upside it's a level to uh, to consider taking profit so you often see pullbacks uh, when we trade into that 1000 level equally on the downside when we when we hit uh, negative 1000 ticks uh, that also is again a profit taking alert for a lot of uh, program and algorithmic trading models so i pay attention to these tick extremes as uh, as potential pauses in the market or if i'm trading into one of my levels and uh, and i get a tick extreme then that can be used to initiate a trade as well final tool that uh, that i pay very close attention to is the delta cumulative delta uh, without going into too much detail the basic concept here is that this uh, represents uh, buying and selling pressure so when we're moving to the upside what that's telling us is that the 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 buy side pressure is greater than the sell side pressure in the market. When we're moving to the downside, it's telling us that the sellers are applying greater pressure in the market than the buyers. I'll go into a little bit more detail about that uh, shortly. Levels to keep an eye on. This blue line is uh, the full session volume weighted average price. So that's the level at which buyers and sellers are basically uh, coming into agreement upon value. So I pay close attention to the volume weighted average price. And this gold line basically represents the 50% retracement of the of the day's trading session. So it's the uh, what many people refer to as the halfway back level of, uh, of the trading session uh, in any given 24 hours. Going back to the real-time example on Friday, we, I was looking to be a buyer on a break and hold above 43.04. We traded up into that level and consolidated. Uh, note that at the point we got into this zone, that uh, the, the AD line went positive, breadth was positive, and the delta was positive. So this gave uh, quite a bit of uh, confirmation for me personally to initiate a trade. And like I say, I was looking for a break and hold. So we broke through the 4304, consolidated and then broke to the upside. And I initiated longs at 4305, uh, which I'm still holding. One of the key um, levels that I identify in my trade plan is this two sigma volatility support and resistance. These levels are statistically significant versus the close of the prior session. So what it's telling us is that price is moving two standard deviations away uh, from the prior close. Now, 95% of the time, when these levels are tested on the upside or to the downside, we will actually close uh, above or below them. So if we test it to the upside, I'm anticipating we're going we are going to get a, a close below that level. When we test it to the downside, I'm anticipating we're going to get close above that level. And these are areas where I will look to uh, to trade uh, on any given day because of the statistical significance. And you can see on uh, on Friday, we traded up. So we were looking at a volatility resistance, two sigma volatility resistance, 43.56, high of the day, 43.58, uh, before retreating uh, nearly 20 points there to the downside. So pay attention to those uh, two sigma volatility support and resistance levels because I certainly, uh, certainly do. So let me just wrap things up.
talking a little bit more about how I use um, the Delta indicator. The, the main way I'm looking to, to use it is uh, for uh, divergence. Now, there are two types of divergence for this indicator. There is uh, the di standard divergence in terms of uh, exhaustion, and then there is the other type of divergence, which is absorption. So let me just break this down for you. So what we've got here is a one minute chart, a 30 second chart, sorry. And you can see this is the E-mini S&P 500. We make a high, Delta makes a high. We pull back, we break and make new highs, but we note here that Delta doesn't make new highs. So what's that telling us? Well, it's basically telling us that the buyers, the buy side pressure is not supportive of the price action. And in this instance, you can see that uh, as we test into that area, Delta couldn't make a new high, price did attempt to make a new high, got rejected. And then you can see the exhaustion in the market and uh, and sellers stepped in and we got uh, and we got a pullback. Moving to the next chart here, you can see that in this instance, um, price makes a new low, but Delta doesn't make a new low. So what can we read from that? Well, what we read from that is that the uh, although price has pulled back, there is a there is more buying pressure in the market than uh, than is indicated by the price action. So what we're anticipating then is that buyers are going to step in and take price higher, which is exactly what happens as sellers were exhausted and began to liquidate positions. Next example here is uh what this one is of um absorption so what we get here is uh price pulls back we make a swing sorry we make a swing low extend to the upside price pulls back then that is replicated on the delta chart here but what you notice as uh, as price pulls back delta actually makes a new low so what's that uh, what, what can we read from that well that's telling us that in all likelihood there is more buying pressure in the market than, uh, than we're seeing in terms of the delta indicator. And we'd be expecting prices to extend higher, certainly whilst we maintain price above this current swing low. And you can see in this next example, that's exactly what happened. The selling pressure was absorbed by the buyers and price rallies. And in this next example, Price fails to make a new high, while Delta does make a new high. So again, what's that telling us? Well, it's telling us that the buying pressure was absorbed by the sellers and price falls. So hopefully that gives you uh, an overview of how best to uh, to navigate, how to use the information that I'm providing, and uh, and how we can work together to consistently and profitably trade uh, trade these markets. If you have any questions, feel free to drop me an email at uh, patrick.munley at tickmillpartners.com, and I'll be happy to come back to you and cover off any queries, or reach out to me in the chat, which is uh, which you can access from the main page uh, where I am where I'm pretty active. Uh, throughout the uh, trading week. As always, traders, plan the trade, trade the plan, and most importantly, manage your risk. Until next time, thanks very much.